Hey, you geeks. When life gives you flossing Kelsier, I move my Mistborn secret history review up a few months to right now. I first read this story and the rest of the Arcanum Unbounded for my Cosmere Villains ranking video, but I didn't know what to say about this story in particular. So like any good creative type, I procrastinated. Naturally, I reread before I reviewed. Mistborn's secret history is basically a framing story around a series of lectures on the Cosmere and one fun side quest. It provides all those pesky little details I lacked when I had no idea what was going on in the original Mistborn trilogy. It also gives context for why the fandom loves Kelsier so gosh darn much. I mean, I liked him fine as a flawed mentor who... Spoilers? The story itself is a spoiler fest for Mistborn Era 1 and apparently part of Mistborn Era 2, but I haven't read that yet, so I can't say for certain. If you are still here for Fortnite, go and read all those books before coming back here. If you've caught up on your reading or just don't care, here is my spoilerific breakdown of characters, world building, magic, and plot. Leave it to Sanderson to give me enough content in a novella to do a whole breakdown. Kelsier. Everyone's favorite dead mentor has not died. Drat. I liked it when he died a hero. Now I'm not so sure. You either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. He's not a villain, but he just keeps on living. Sorta. He could have actually died and gone to the beyond where, if it exists, his beloved wife will be waiting for him. But this illegitimate child is still not dead. Yet. He's not yet dead. That's what the kids have said. No, he's not yet dead. Wit was right, trying to knock some sense into this man. Unfortunately, that backfired. So we see how the rivalry between the Cosmere's two biggest troublemakers began. Despite Kelsier's constant refusal to die, he does grow as a character. He goes from punching his god, preservation. The hell I will. Have. Which I gotta say was kinda justified to punching his other god, Ruin. That was definitely justified. Between those two iconic punches, Kelsier and Fuzz become unlikely friends. Then when Fuzz dies, Kelsier becomes a god. And then, surprise, he gives it up and lets Vin do her thing. He's such a great father figure for her, and gives the impression of actually growing as a person, despite being dead. When a felon's not engaged in his employment, his employment. or maturing his felonious little plans, little plans. his capacity for innocent enjoyment, Sent enjoyment, he's just as great as any honest man. But Vin and I still have our concerns. That epilogue. Kelsier is up to new tricks, which has me very nervous. Kelsier's had his fun playing God and is now on to bigger, better things. And I'll survive. I will survive. World building. Or should I say universe building? Since this entire story basically occurs within the cognitive realm on the edge of the greater Cosmere. When there's hardly no day, no hardly no night, there's things off in shadow and off way in light. I consider anything Chris and Naj say to be world building. We meet them in this book. For those new to the Cosmere, Chris and Naj are the ones who write the notes in the back of the books. And in the case of Stormlight, we get to see Naj's notes on Roshar. 
Chris plays exposition fairy and tells Kelsier about the world, the shards, and that Scadriel was made by Preservation and Ruin working together. That explains a lot. Scadrians are people of extremes, either sheeple under preservation or violent murderers under ruin. In the cognitive realm, Kelsier has the best seat in the house for all of Mistborn Era 1's shenanigans, much better than the point of view characters for the original trilogy. I can see what's happening. What? And they don't have a clue. This book, before Rhythm of War, explains all that nonsense about what happens when you bind a soul to an excremental ton of investiture with a specific intent. It nicely sets up the Sander Blanche of this book and the Hero of Ages, since the first time through that book, I had no clue people could ascend into godhood until Vin did it. I still have no idea how she got preservation to destroy ruin, but she did it. Did Jet just die? You know, it was really unclear. Most disturbingly of all, the book does not explain what happens when a soul gives up the powers of a shard. On the bright side, Kelsier doesn't know either, but he's sure as shootin' gonna find out. Magic System in this book, we learn how Investiture interacts with the soul creating magic. We learn about cracks in the soul and madness, a very non-specific kind of madness. I'm just crazy. All I want is a Section 8. You know what you can do with this. This was also written before Sanderson distinguished between what is magical madness and what is mental illness. So let's just assume that when he's talking about crazy people, he means the magically mad. So certain lines get significantly less cringy. Like the world building, this does a fantastic job of clarifying the magic needed to kill Ruin. Kelsier figures it all out and then tells Spook. Undercutting Spook's arc in The Hero of Ages, where he seemed to figure it out on his own. Incidentally, it also builds Kelsier's eventual arc to manipulate, I mean, work with, Spook. Recycling hemallergic spikes is totally ethical, right? The other unfortunate thing about this magic system is that it relies on a magic goo from off-world Elantrians for Kelsier to hold the world together for a few chapters. In any other book, the explanation and work that goes into setting up this magical doohickey would be acceptable. But in a Sanderson novel, it feels very contrived as a way for Kelsier to do something besides watching his world end, which is basically the plot. Plot. A story within the story, because what they don't know is how we really were there, even though they didn't know we were there, you know? Oi. This is a mess, but a beautiful one. If only all fan service could be handled as well as the Mistborn secret history. Alas, tis not so. Kelsier's story is the greatest hits from Mistborn Era 1 from the perspective of almost everyone's favorite undead thief. After he initially refuses to die, the plot gets quite boring. Slowly, we meet Ruin, the thing trying to destroy the world and see all of his tricks. This steaming heap of information reveals the consequences of Vin letting go of the well's powers before it happens. What do I not know? Arendelle's in deep, 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 deep snow. Suddenly, the mist spirit disemboweling Elend makes so much more sense. My first time through Era 1, I was way too confused to be scared for the characters. Kelsier gives the whole thing a refreshing perspective, though as a standalone, this act does not make any sense. The next act, where Kelsier eventually gets to do something, going to steal the magical thingamajig from the Elantrian jerks. Considering how pre-Rio Delantrians were worshipped as gods with no known limits to their power, I'm surprised more of them weren't extreme egoists. 
Please feel free to bask in my glow. This side quest is the only time we get to see Kelsier pull an on-screen con. Conning a religion into existence doesn't count because he doesn't get any coin. Kelsier gets back in time for the Hero of Ages Sanderlanch, which I've already talked about. Ellen and Vin get a proper send-off. We get to see their relatively happy ending instead of just taking Sazed's word for it. And now Kelsier is setting into his role of ex-shard and casual acquaintance of divinities, with nothing to do but scheme. Wish I could be part of that world. So you can see why I'm nervous. And read Rhythm of War to find out why I'm right. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe if you would like to see more. Your patronage is greatly appreciated.